So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Matt and in this video we'll be doing our next instalment of going through some GCSE Matt higher big mark questions taken from some past papers. Now as always there'll be a copy of the questions and the mark scheme for you to have an attempt at before watching through this video as we go through the answers in the description below. Now before we get started working through these questions, let's just have a closer look at what topic each of the questions refer to. So the first question looks at trigonometry in SIRS and that's worth 5 marks. Question 2 is compound units and ratios. Question 3 is trig. Question 4 is equation of a circle mixed in with some simultaneous equations and quadratics. And the fifth one is direct proportion. Now there's no indication about which questions are going to be non-calculated, but I would say it would be fair to assume that question 1 and question 2 are going to, uh, sorry, question one and maybe question four and five are going to be non calculated to question two and three, most likely are going to be calculated questions. Now, again, a reminder that I strongly recommend that you have an attempt at these questions to see how much you know, and also I'll include the mark scheme in the copy of the questions that you can click on in the link in the description so that you can see that if you've got the same answer but used a different method, you can see whether the exam board will still accept it for the marks that are allocated. Now, if you've not had a chance to print out these questions, then all you need to do is just pause the video as I'm reading out the question, have an attempt at it, and then unpause so you can go through the answer. So looking at question one, it says the area of this triangle is 25 root 3, and the question is asking us to work out the value of y, uh, w, give your answer in the form of a root b, where a and b are integers greater than 1. So let's get started on this particular question. So here we can see that we've got a triangle and most likely we're going to be using the sine rule or the cosine rule and we've got an angle of 60. So we're looking at exact values of trig, particularly as they want their final answer as a third. So looking at this, we're not going to be using the sine rule simply because we don't know two of the angles. So it's definitely going to be using the cos rule, but we've also been given the area of the triangle. So let's work with that first because I can't go straight into the cosine rule as I don't know two sides. So then using this, then what we can then know is that the area of a triangle is half AB sine C. So if you call the angle C, these two sides here are going to be A and B. So from this, we can see that uh, a, so at 0 0.5 or half, let's go for a half because we're looking at non-calculator. So let's go for a half multiplied by 20, multiplied by x, multiplied by sine 60 equals 25 root 3. Now I want to work out what x is, so if I just simplify the left-hand side as much as possible. Now cos 60, or this here, is root 3 over 2. And if you're not sure about remembering the exact values of trig, there are easy ways to do that. And there's a video that I've got on the channel that you can watch. So from that, what we've then got is a half multiplied by 20, multiplied by x, multiplied by root 3 over 2, and that equals 25 root 3. So again, neatening all this up, I've got, if I just look at the, the numerator, I've got a half times 20, which is 10. And then I've got x root 3. So that's going to be 10x root 3, all divided by 2 equals 25 root 3. Then the 10 and the 2 cancel out to leave me with 5. So I've got 5x equals no, 5x root 3. So 5x root 3 equals 25 root 3. Now I've got root 3 on both the left hand side and the right hand side. So 5x equals 25. So x equals 5. So I can cancel that and write a 5 there instead. Now from this I can then use the cosine rule to now work out what w is going to be because I now know the two sides of that triangle. So from this, if I just move this down a little bit, then what we've got is that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times cos of a. So relabeling this triangle, let's start by calling this a. So that's going to be little a. This is going to be b and this is going to be c. So from this, what we've then got is we've got w squared equals, and it's going to be 5 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 5 times 20 times cos of 60. 
Now, again, going back to the exact values of trig, cos 60 is a half. Five, two times five is 10, times 20 is 200. And then five squared is 25, and 20 squared is 400. And I've got W squared. So from this, what I've then got is that W squared is going to be 425 minus, and then 100 times 2, or 100 over 2, uh, 200 over 2 rather, is going to be 100. So W squared equals 325. So then from this, I can then work out what W is. So W is going to be the square root of 325. And then now what we'll do is we want to simplify this third. So you think about what square number goes into 325. Well, that's going to be 25. So it's going to be 25 multiplied by how many 25s go into 325? Well, four 25s go into 100. So then that's going to be 12 into 300 plus 1 is 13, which then gives me an answer of 5 root 13. That can't be simplified anymore and is in the form of a root 13. Moving on to question two, it says that the volume of a metal is 45 centimeter cubed. The metal, the metal is made from copper and tin. The volume of copper to the volume of tin is in the ratio 22 to three. The density of copper is 8.96 grams per centimeter cubed. And the density of the tin is 7.31 grams uh, per centimeter cubed. And the question is asking us to work out the mass of the metal. So from this, what we want to do is we want to check that our units are the same. So for the volume and for the density, and you can see that we've got centimeter cubed, which is absolutely fine. So we don't need to tinker with anything of those. Now, the key thing to remember is that density equals mass over volume and that mass equals density times volume. These are the formulas that I'm going to be using. So from this, what we can then do is to then work out what the volume of the copper is going to be. So the volume of the copper is going to be 22 over 45. So if we convert this fraction, this ratio, sorry, into a fraction, so we've got 22, and it's actually going to be not 45, it's going to be over 25. Uh, so there we go and then we multiply that by the total which is 45 because we're working out the proportion so for every 22 parts three parts are going to be tin so from this then we just multiply it by the proportion and if I type that into my calculator I get 39.6 and that's going to be centimeter cubed I then do the same for the volume of the tin I could do it in a couple of ways. I can either subtract 39.6 away from 45 or I can check to make sure the proportion is correct in which then I get 5.4 and if I add those two numbers that I've just calculated up they do give me 45 so those volumes are correct. So then the next thing for me then to do is now I can now work out what the mass is going to be of the metal by working that and using the formulas this formula here and these numbers that I've been given. So here, the mass of the copper is going to be the density of the copper, which is 8.96, multiplied by the volume, which I worked out as being 39.6. I type that into my calculator and I get 354.816. I then do the same for the tin. So the mass of tin is going to be 7.31 which is the density multiplied by the volume which is 5.4 and that comes up to a total of 39.474 then all I've then got to do is just simply add those two answers together for the total mass so the total mass is going to equal 394.29 and that's going to be in grams Moving on to question three, it says that ABC and ACD are triangles. Work out the size of angle X. So in order to work out the size of angle X, I've got two angles and I've got one side. So in order to use a sine rule, I need to work out what this side here is going to be, which as X is taken, I'm just going to call that Y. So looking at this triangle here, this right angle triangle I should note as well, uh, which is poorly highlighted there. I've got, if I just label this up, I've got theta 
this is going to be the opposite and this is going to be the adjacent so here what I've got is tan 49 equals the opposite y over the adjacent which is 16 so y equals 16 tan 49 now I can type that into my calculator and I'll get a long decimal number which in this case is going to be 18 point four zero five eight now because I've not finished the question I can swap that and just write eighteen point four oh five eight now one thing you might want to do is to rather than writing a long decimal number because sometimes accuracy does come into key we could just write that at the answer of y as sixteen tan forty nine and that will give us the exact value just means we just got to type in a few extra numbers but the choice is yours I would say as long as you go a few extra decimal numbers after the decimal point from what you want in your final answer so if you want to give your answer to one decimal place then maybe showing decimal numbers up to three decimal places in your working out should be fine and not affect your answer so from this what we can then do is work with the triangle a b c now so from this I can use the sign rule so if I just label this up so this is going to be a this length here that I've worked out is going to be little a this angle here of 35 is going to be capital B and 20 is going to be little b so then using the formula which I'm just going to write down here I can then substitute those numbers in so here I've got 18.4058 or you could have written 16 tan 49 over sine x is equal to 20 over sine 35 now I'm running kind of running out of space let me just move over to this side so here if I cross multiply I get 20 sine x equals 18.4058 sine 35 I then take the 20 over to the side so sine x equals 18.4058 times sine 35 or divided by 20 so then to work out x on my calculator the inverse sign of the answer or this fraction that I've just worked out here and I type that into my calculator and I get an answer of 31.8 degrees and that's to one decimal place moving on to question four so it says here the line y equals 3x plus p and the circle x squared plus y squared equals 53 intersect at points a and b p is a positive integer show that the x ordinates of a and b satisfy the equation of 10x squared plus 6px plus p squared minus 53 equals zero now whenever you see the word intersect what you want to think about is simultaneous equations so what I'm going to have to do here is substitute one equation into the other. Now because I want to work out the x ordinates, I'm going to substitute y into this quadratic formula. So if I do that, I end up with x squared plus, and instead of writing y, I'm going to write 3x plus p squared equals 53. I then need to expand this out, so I've got x squared plus 3x plus p and 3x plus p now again a lot of students when they do this they always go wrong because they just square the 3x and just square the p without realizing that they are double brackets so then from this what I then get is 9x squared plus 6xp plus p squared equals 53 and then if I take the 53 over to the other side and simplify I'm going to end up with 10x squared plus 6px plus p squared minus 53 equals zero which is exactly what they wanted me to show now looking at question b it says the coordinates of a are two seven work out the coordinates of b and you must show your working out and this is going to be five marks so it is going to be worth quite a lot of marks now if i just write down that formula from part a which is 10 x squared plus 6 x p plus p squared minus 53 equals zero now for this what I need to do is I need to work out what p is now I know that one x value is two so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute x equals two into this particular equation so what I end up with is 10 2 squared plus 6 times 2 p plus p squared minus 53 equals zero and what I end up with if I simplify is I end up with p squared plus 12p 
minus 13 equals zero. Now this does factorize, so I can factorize it as p plus 13, there's one bracket, and p minus one in the other bracket, giving me p values of minus 13 or one. Now if we go back to the original question, it does say that p is a positive integer. So that means that minus 13 is not gonna be allowed. So we can simply, we do need, still need to write that out, but I'm just gonna cross that out. And it says that p equals a positive integer. So p equals one. Now from that, what I can then do is substitute p equals one into this. So sub p equals one, and what I end up with is 10x squared plus six x plus one minus 53 equals zero. Then from this, I can write this as 10x squared plus six x minus 52 equals zero. And then as I've got all my coefficients of factors of two, I can divide by two. So I've got five x squared plus three x minus 26 equals zero. Now what I now want to do is I need now need to solve by either factorizing or the quadratic formula. Now it's entirely up to you which one you go for. If you do factorize, it does factorize and it'll be 5x plus 13 and x minus 2 equals 0. And so if I go on to solve this, I get x equals minus 13 over 5 or x equals two. And if I use the quadratic formula, I should still end up with those two answers. Now from this, we can see that this x equals two is the x ordinate of a. So that means that this value here must be the x ordinate of b. So looking at the equation of the straight line, so it's y equals three x plus p. Well, I've already worked out that p equals one. So then the equation then is y equals three x plus one. So when x equals minus 13 over five, I get y equals three lots of minus 13 over five plus one. So y equals an answer of minus 34 over five. And as a decimal, that's going to be minus 6.8. So here I can either write my answer in one or two ways. I could write it as a decimal or write them as a fraction. So here then I've got one version as minus 13 over five and minus 34 over five, or I could write it as a decimal and that's going to be minus 2.6 and minus 6.8. So any of those two would be absolutely fine for the five marks, but a very, very big question in terms of how much work is needed for those five marks. Then moving on to our final question, it says the ball is dropped vertically, falls D meters in T seconds. D is directly proportional to the square of T, and it says that the, the ball drops 45 meters in the first three seconds. How far does it drop in the next seven seconds? So let's first of all, set up our equation as this is a direct proportion question. So D is directly proportional to the square of T. So I start by replacing the proportional symbol with equals K. And then I substitute these numbers in to try and find out what K is. So here I've got 45 equals K times three squared. So 45 equals nine K. So K equals five. So then the formula is gonna be D equals five T squared. Now from this, because it says the next seven seconds, that means a total of 10 seconds because uh, four, sorry, three plus seven equals 10 seconds. So from this then, what I'm doing then is substituting the T of 10. So here I've got the distance equals five times 10 squared, and that equals 500 meters. Now the question says for the next seven, so in the first three seconds, so from those 10 seconds of zero to 10 seconds, it's traveled a total of 500 meters. 
Now in the first three seconds, it was 45 meters. So here at three, it's 45 meters. So the question's asking is what is this length here gonna be? Well, that length there is gonna be 500 minus 45, which gives me an answer of 455 as my final answer.